I need glasses. I have been having trouble seeing the blackboard. Everything is blurry. I keep getting headaches. I told my mother about it, and she made an appointment with the optometrist. I went to a place where they made me read words and letters on a chart. Some of the words were big, and some were very small. I tried to read everything, but sometimes I couldn't see some of the small letters. The optometrist would cover one of my eyes while I read the chart. Then, she would cover my other eye. She even put some drops in my eyes. I asked the optometrist if I had passed or failed the test. She laughed and said it wasn't that kind of test that you passed or failed. She was just trying to find out if I needed glasses. I did need glasses. My mother and I looked around. There were many pairs of frames. I wanted something that was in style. I tried on many pairs of frames. Some of them looked good on me, and some of them looked really funny on me. I finally chose a frame that was my favorite. I gave them to a lady who did some measurements. She told me to come back on Friday to get my glasses. On Friday, I got my glasses. My friends liked them. They said I looked smart in my glasses. I wore them to school on Monday, and I was able to see the blackboard clearly. I didn't realize how much I hadn't been able to see. Now I don't get headaches anymore. I'm glad that I have my glasses. Everything is a lot clearer now. I am clumsy. My mother says that I am clumsy. My father says that I am clumsy. I know that I am clumsy. I do things all the time that are clumsy. I fall down for no reason at all. If there is a crack in the sidewalk, I will be sure to trip on it and fall down. If I carry a plate of food in the cafeteria, I almost always either drop it or bump into someone with it. I don't try to do these things; it just happens. When I drink juice. I miss my mouth and get juice all over my shirt. I always have something spilled on my clothes. Last week I opened a jar of peanut butter. The jar flew out of my hands and landed upside down on the floor. There was a big glob of peanut butter on the floor. Yesterday I knocked over the sugar bowl. There was a big sticky mess on the floor. I bump my head when I get into the car. I rip my pants on things. I lose my money out of my pockets. I step on the cat's tail. I always feel bad when I do that because the cat thinks I don't love her. I don't mean to do these things. I am just a clumsy person. My parents tell me to slow down. I am always in a hurry. Maybe that's why I'm so clumsy. Maybe it's just the stage that I am going through. If it is, I hope it is over soon. Being clumsy. Is no fun at all. Home alone. I remember the first time that my parents left me home alone. I was very grown up, and I thought that I would be just fine. I was fine for a while. I watched television and had something to eat. I called my friend on the phone, and we talked for a while. Then I sat down to read a book. The house was quiet, very quiet. I found myself listening very carefully. I heard a tap, tap, tapping noise. I wondered where it was coming from. It seemed to be coming from the window. I turned out the lights so that nobody would see me, and I peeked out the window carefully. I was expecting to see a robber tapping at my window. There was nobody there. It was just a tree branch swaying in the breeze and tapping at my window. I felt silly. I turned on the lights and sat back down to read my book. A few minutes later, I heard some creaking noises. I listened carefully. Then, I heard a clunking noise. I think it might have been the furnace. Then there was a whirring noise. 
my imagination began to play tricks on me. I was imagining that there were all kinds of creatures in the house. I told myself to grow up. I wouldn't let my imagination run away with me. I was glad when my parents got home. I told them about all the noises that I had heard. My parents laughed and said that all houses make noises. We're usually just so busy that we don't hear all the noises that go on. I have stayed home alone many times now. I just ignore all the little creaks and noises that I hear. I'm still alert and listen for anything suspicious, but I know that there are lots of noises that are harmless. That tree that taps on my window still frightens me sometimes, but I'm a lot braver now than I was the first time that I stayed home alone. Family. What does the word family mean to you? The easiest way to define family is to talk about. Who you are related to? Usually, there is a mom and a dad, and children who are brothers and sisters. This would be the core family. Then there is the extended family, which would include grandparents, aunts and uncles, cousins, nieces and nephews, and in-laws. People married to your brothers or sisters, husband or wife. However. I think the word family has a much deeper meaning. The word family brings words to my mind like love, support, help, kindness, fun, love, trips, closeness, love, forgiving, sharing, love, understanding, respect, and love. You'll notice one word that is repeated over and over again: love. I believe if a family has real love for one another, they will be able to overcome any problems they may have. Actually, they may not have too many problems if they all love and respect one another. However, there are things that cannot be helped, like death, sickness, or accidents. It is during those hard times that a family's love helps them to go through those experiences. We had quite a few children in my family. There were brothers and sisters, which included an adopted brother, and a number of foster children too. I was also very fortunate that I had both my mom and dad to live with, and do things like vacations together. We had a lot of fun. And there were some times of tears too. Above all, we love one another. Family is a wonderful thing. I am so lucky. My first job. My first real job was during my last year of high school. I had taken classes in various business subjects. In that last year of high school, we could do a co-op. That meant we could work part. Of the time instead of going to school, it would count as a credit towards our diploma. The place I got a job was at a men's tailor shop. The owners were a very nice older German couple. They had two other men working for them too. One of the men had had brain surgery for cancer. He had a big long scar all around the top of his head. He told me all about it. He was always happy and full of fun. I thought he was very brave. The tailor shop made suits to order. One of the salesmen would measure the man, and the customer would choose a fabric and style, for he or his wife liked. The people in the back of the shop would then cut and sew the suit. The suits cost a lot of money. There were also suits already made that the customer could buy instead if they wished. They could also rent suits or tuxedos for weddings or parties. I worked at a little desk. I answered the phone, wrote letters, filed papers, and did some bookkeeping. It was about a mile walk from my school to work. I passed many clothing shops. That wasn't good because I spent a lot of my money that I earned in those shops. I worked at the tailor shop for almost a year. It was a good experience. And helped me get my next job, 
with the United States Navy. That was fun, too. First trip away from home. Today I'm going to my friend's house. Her name is Valerie. This is going to be my first trip away from home without my parents. My dad is driving me to Valerie's house, and I'll be staying there for two weeks. Her mom will drive me back home. It takes about one and a half hours to get there. I have to pack enough clothes for play, work, and church. I hope I'll pack the right things. Of course, I have to remember my toothbrush and hairbrush. Valerie lives on a farm. I'll be helping her dad with milking the cows, I think. We'll play up in the hayloft after we have helped put the bales into the barn. We'll be all itchy when the job is done. There are a lot of things to do on a farm. Her mum is a good cook and will feed us well. There is a nice pond where we can go swimming. I mustn't forget my bathing suit. I wonder if the farm dog comes into the pond too. That would be funny. My dad and mum are giving me money just in case we go shopping. I hope we do go shopping because I want to buy lots of candy. I won't tell my mum that. Oh dear, I hear dad yelling, Let's go! I haven't even finished packing my things yet. I guess I better stop writing this now and get busy fast. Bye. My job. I work at a conservation park called Balls Falls. I've only worked there for three weeks now. I am a tour guide, and I tell people the history of all the old buildings there. Somebody told me that one of the houses I work in is haunted. Now I get chills every time I walk into that house. My boss told me that the stories aren't real, but I have an active imagination. Balls Falls is very beautiful. It has two different waterfalls the upper falls and the lower falls. There used to be tons of water cascading over them, which turned a big water wheel to grind grain. However, through the years, The amount of water has really lessened. I love working at Balls Falls because I get to work outside a lot. I'm getting a tan. In July and August, I will be working with kids there at a day camp. I am getting ready now, making different crafts and thinking up fun new games to play. I can't wait to start working with them. I think that will be the best part of the summer. I will be going to work tomorrow. I usually have to work from 9 a.m. to 4 30 p.m. I also like the people I work with. They are very nice. Come to Balls Falls and I'll give you a tour. My hobby. Let's see. Today I might go fly a kite or maybe go for a swim. It is hot outside and I don't know what to do. My mom tells me that I should do something that I like doing on hot days. Since our house is nice and cool, I guess I'll stay inside and work on my hobby. My hobby is something that not a lot of people do. I make and collect bookmarks. To make my bookmarks, I use stickers and special art pencils to draw. I buy the stickers at a mall, usually in a card store. The art pencils are bought in an art store. To make the bookmarks, I start with a piece of paper. I measure out how big I want the bookmark to be with a ruler. I once made a bookmark so big that it couldn't even be used in a very big book. After I measure it, I draw lines so that I can cut it straight. Sometimes I use fancy scissors that cut zigzag or frills. Then I start to decorate them. I like to draw cartoons and flowers on my bookmarks. Sometimes I even put real flowers on them. A lot of the time I write little sayings on the bookmarks. I like to give my bookmarks to friends and family. Sometimes I even sell my bookmarks to people. I like my hobby. I can draw whatever I want on the bookmarks. Maybe sometime in the future I will be a famous bookmark maker. And even have my own store.
If I had a million dollars. If I had a million dollars, I'd travel the world. I would go to the highest mountain. I would swim the deepest sea. I would probably buy a lot of clothes because I love clothes. More than anything, though, I would want to visit Ireland. I want to see the rolling hills and the green, green grass that everyone talks about. When I think of Ireland, I think of where my family came from many years ago. I am almost all Irish, and I would love to see my family over in Ireland. If I had a million dollars, I would buy a Mustang or a Pontiac Sunbird car. I would buy a nice house with a big backyard and an outdoor and indoor pool. I would love to take my family wherever they wanted to go. I would buy them wonderful presents too. However, I know that money does not buy happiness. It does not buy you friends or family. It may bring some happiness only for the moment, but in the long run, your family is what will be there for you if you love them and are there for them. If I had to pick between a million dollars and my family, I would pick my family. The million dollars is a nice dream. If that dream ever comes true and I do get a lot of money, I hope I would use it wisely. A picnic. What a great day for a picnic! We're not only having a picnic; we're having a big bike ride too. We did this last year with a lot of friends. Also, it was really fun. We meet quite early in the morning in a pretty little town. The town is where the Niagara River flows into Lake Ontario in Canada. The town's name is Niagara on the Lake. Then all of the people, fifty or more, get on their bikes or rollerblades. We go on a bike path beside the river. The path we take is about eleven kilometers or six miles long. There are a lot of people using the path too. We usually stop for an ice cream treat near the end, or where we turn around to go back to our cars. It is just before the park where we will have our picnic, and a steep hill. Many of the men and boys go up the hill. Most of the women and children go back to their cars. The ride takes about two hours plus whatever time we take at the ice cream store. After the ride is finished. We go to the park. We have a delicious potluck lunch. Potluck means everyone brings some food to share with the others. We eat, rest, talk, and laugh. After we've cleaned up, some of us climb the tower that is there, remembering a war at that place and its general. It is a steep climb, over one hundred steps. We usually end the day with a fun game of baseball or soccer. Finally, we pack up our stuff. Tired and dirty, we head for home with good memories swimming in our heads. Working in my yard, I live in a house that has a small yard around it. In my yard, there is a lawn and a garden. There is also a sidewalk that leads to my front door. And a driveway that leads to my garage. Throughout the year, I work to maintain my yard. During the summer, I cut the grass that grows in my yard using a lawnmower. I like the smell of the grass when it has just been cut, but it's better not to cut the grass too short. When the weather is dry, I also put water on the lawn and garden, so that the grass and flowers can grow. During the autumn. Many leaves fall from the trees in my yard. I use a rake to collect the leaves from the lawn. Then I can put the leaves into bags. I can use the leaves to make fertilizer. When I was a kid, I didn't like the job of raking leaves, but now I don't mind it. Another job during the autumn is to remove flowers from the garden before cold weather arrives. During the winter. There is no work to do in the lawn or garden because they are covered in snow. But I need to keep the snow off my sidewalk and driveway. 
Whenever it snows, I use a shovel to clear the snow from the sidewalk and the driveway. Sometimes it snows a lot. If I didn't shovel the snow, it would soon be impossible to get into my house. During the spring, the snow melts. I clean up my yard by sweeping away the dirt and by removing weeds from the lawn and garden. I also put flowers back into the garden. It's nice to see them again after the long, cold winter. When spring comes, the grass grows very quickly, so I need to cut the grass quite often. Working in the yard can be very satisfying work. It's so nice when the lawn and garden are looking green and healthy. Early morning. <gasps> Yawn! I am so tired. I don't like getting up in the morning. I wish I could sleep in until noon. My mom has to come into my room and shake my feet. Get up, you lazy girl, she says. It's time to rise and shine. It's a beautiful day. I raise my head, mumble and turn over, putting my pillow over my head. My mom yanks my pillow from off my head and starts tickling me. Okay, I'll get up, I shriek. The sun is so bright that I squint. I think I will go outside and play. I can't wait to get up now. My mom cooks me breakfast. I have eggs, bacon, toast, and orange juice. When I finish my breakfast, I brush my teeth, comb my hair, wash my face, and then change into my play clothes. I choose a bright pink and yellow tank top with jean shorts and blue sandals. My bike is in the garage where my dad keeps the cars and tools. As I pedal, my hair flies out behind me. I keep my mouth shut so that bugs don't get in. I am going down a big hill now. I can hardly pedal anymore. My legs are moving so fast. I hang onto my handlebars tightly. I don't want to fall off. I finally am able to slow down as the road becomes level. I turn a corner and decide to go back home. I realize I now have to ride up the hill. I know I will be tired when I get to the top. I think that I will have some water now before I start to go up. Mmm, it tastes great. It is so clean and cold. Well, I know that I have a big trip ahead of me, so I need to get going. Bye bye. The wedding. We went into the church and sat down. There were pretty flowers at the front. There was beautiful organ music playing. The church was full of people dressed up nicely. Everyone was waiting to see the beautiful bride walk up the aisle. A hush, an intake of breath. There she was. Oh, she was so beautiful. She had a lovely long white dress with pretty lace and beads. Her hair was swept up off from her face. There were curls flowing down her back. Instead of a veil, she had little flowers in her hair. Her bouquet of tiny flowers was very, very pretty. Her dad looked very proud of her. He looked just a little sad, too. At the front of the church, the groom stood waiting. He had a beautiful, tender smile on his face. He took his bride's hand as her dad left her there. They smiled at each other. The minister read, prayed, and offered some words of advice to the lovely couple. Someone sang a pretty song. The groom slipped the simple wedding band on the bride's finger. She struggled a little to put a band on his finger. Pretty soon the minister said they were now husband and wife. They kissed. We all stood as they walked down the aisle to live the rest of their lives together as Mr. and Mrs. We cried. The Perfect Place There is a place in my mind that is pure. Everything there is beautiful. Many flowers grow, and the grass is very green. The clouds are always white. And fluffy. The tree's branches sweep the earth floor. You can hear the sound of a waterfall. It is roaring with life, 
and the water races. A bird calls in the distance, and as you listen, the sound gets closer. A flapping quite near makes me turn and look. A great, magnificent eagle flies over my head. The strength I see in his powerful wings amazes me. I am never thirsty or hungry. I live off the beauty that surrounds me in this perfect place. I walk on trails that lead me to breathtaking places. The beach is my favorite spot to end up. The sand between my toes is soft and cool. I love to lie down on the sand. I watch the sun go down. Sometimes the sun is a brilliant orange. The world seems like it is on fire. Waves lull me to sleep. The seagulls wake me up. In this perfect place, I have learned so much. The animals and their homes are so precious. I have learned to respect the animals. They were here first. The sounds, smells, and sights are too perfect and full of life. There is no war here, no anger or stress. I don't have to worry about pollution or destruction. My perfect world exists only in my head. Maybe if we all work hard, my fantasy can become real. Visiting the zoo. When I was a kid, I always enjoyed visiting the zoo. My family lived far away from the zoo, so we didn't go there very often. But whenever we went to the zoo, I always had a fun and interesting time. Some of the animals were very large. Of course, the elephants were huge, and they had such an unusual appearance, with their big ears and their long trunk and tusks. The giraffes were very tall, with long necks that reached high into the trees. Some of my favorite animals were big cats. The lions looked very powerful, with their big teeth and paws. The tigers were just as big and strong, with yellow and black stripes. But the bears were even larger than these cats. The polar bears, with their bright white fur, liked to swim through the water. The grizzly bears had brown fur and liked to roam around on land. The animals from Australia seemed very unusual. The kangaroos, with their strong legs and long tail. Could jump great distances across the ground. The baby kangaroo could go inside its mother's pouch. Another Australian animal, the koala bear, crawled slowly in the trees where it ate leaves. The monkeys and apes were also very interesting. In many ways, they reminded me of people. Some of the monkeys were very small. They could use their arms, legs, and tail to swing through the trees. Some of the apes were very large. The gorilla was the largest of all. Sometimes a big gorilla would stand up and pound his fists on his chest. To see all the animals at the zoo took almost a whole day. By the end of the day, I was very tired from walking around, but I was also very happy. To see all the amazing animals from places around the world. The dentist appointment. My dentist called my house the other day. He told me I needed my teeth cleaned. I set up an appointment to see him on Saturday, June the tenth. When I got to my dentist's office, I had to sit in the waiting room. There were other people ahead of me. They finally called my name. I went into his room and sat down on a big blue chair. They leaned it back. A bright light was turned on. It hurt my eyes, so I closed them. My dentist asked me to open my mouth. I did. I thought my mouth was very big, but he told me to open it even wider. Soon he began poking around to see if I had any cavities. He flossed my teeth. And put fluoride around my teeth too. The fluoride tasted like bubble gum. I had to spit into a dish-like bowl. It squirted out water. My dentist kept asking me questions. I couldn't answer because there were weird tools in my mouth. When I tried answering back, 
He seemed to understand, though. His helper came into the room. She asked me to open my mouth again. I had to clamp down on something that felt like rubber. She put a big camera type machine right next to my cheek. She did this on the other side of my face as well. They took two pictures of my teeth. It was really cool. The dentist told me my teeth were perfect. I didn't have any problems. I could go home. See you next year, he said. Daydream. Little Annie was very bored one lazy afternoon. She had nothing to do. She had already played with her brothers in the sandbox and had tea with them and her dollies too. She had baked chocolate chip cookies with her mom and even tasted one. They were very good, she thought. Now Annie was trying to figure out what else she could do to pass the day away. Little Annie decided that she would go to her favorite spot in the world, the green grassy field full of daisies beneath the great oak tree. She took a red and white blanket with her. She laid it down on the ground, and then she lay down on it. She lay there looking at the clouds, fluffy and white. She saw bunnies, huge gray elephants, and scary looking crocodiles. Soon little Annie was drifting in and out of clouds and reality. The clouds started dancing with her, begging her to come and play. She got up from her blanket and joined the clouds. They flew over rooftops of all of the village people, swam with the fish in the lake, and said hello to all of the birds that they passed by. Little Annie was having so much fun. The clouds had formed into a chariot, so little Annie could drive if she wanted to. She drove over a rainbow that was bright in the sky. Then she shot through the branches of her friend's spruce tree. Annie suddenly came to a stop. Hearing someone call her name, Annie looked around. She blinked once, twice, and finally everything came into focus. Her brother was tugging at her leg, wondering why she was staring into outer space with a big grin on her face. Oh, little Annie said, not really knowing that she had been sitting there. All along. My friend in the next office. When I started my job a year ago at the university, I did not know my way around. I did not know where to find anything. I had a million questions. But Diane in the next office took me on a tour showing me the places to eat, the library, the lecture rooms. Where to get a picture ID card, how to get from one building to another. When I had a question, I asked Diane how to use the telephone, where to make copies, where to print with my computer, the location of my mailbox. She teaches as I do. We both spend a lot of time helping students and answering their questions. She giggles a lot. I hear her laugh with her students. Sometimes she asks my advice about her work or about a problem. And I ask her advice. Sometimes she comes into my office and says, "I am really angry. Can I whine to you?" Then she talks about a problem, and I listen. And then she returns cheerfully to her office. Sometimes I go into her office and say, "I'm upset about something that happened. Can I come in for a minute?" Then I grumble to her, and she listens. And then I go back cheerfully to my office. Each of us feels better when we have shared our problems. Then they are no longer problems. Diane is shy in a group of people. She is quiet and does not start a conversation. Everyone around her talks, and she listens. On Friday afternoons, she makes popcorn for everyone. We all sit in the staff room and eat microwaved popcorn and drink tea and talk. We start to relax for the weekend. And talk about our plans. She is a good friend. She helps my students when I am not there. She wishes me good luck when I go to a lecture. I am very glad that she can be my friend in the office beside mine. The musician. There once was a little girl named Rain Angel. She loved to sit at the piano and play. Rain Angel was a very gifted girl. 
She had a voice that gave people shivers, and she loved to sing. As Rain got older, she continued to love music. Rain became involved in the choirs and bands at her high school. She loved performing in front of people. She couldn't help but feel the sense of power she had when she was up on stage, and there was always loud clapping when she finished a song. Rain soon went out on her own and looked for someone that could help her become famous. Rain wanted to share her talent with the world. She felt that her special talent for music helped people feel good. Rain went out into the big world, and she did very well. She was always performing her best, and someone finally noticed her. Her new agent helped her to make her first album. Rain became famous because she never quit trying. Rain loved her new way of life. She continued singing and playing her piano. She was even taught how to write her own music. Rain Angel had always dreamed of becoming a celebrity. She always remembered her friends and family when she was famous because they had always believed in her. Rain Angel strove for a faraway place, and it became her reality. She always believed that what she wanted to become was her choice. She believed that if you have the strength and determination, you can make your dreams come true. The circus. Wow! A big tent was in the middle of the town's parking lot. We were going to a three-ring circus. I couldn't wait for it to begin. Inside and outside of the tent, toys, balloons, and food were being sold. All of the children were so very excited. Inside the tent, we found good seats so we could see everything. The band started to play loud music, and the ringmaster came out with a big, tall hat on his head. In one ring, there were small animals, dogs, monkeys, and parrots doing tricks. The dogs were dressed in funny clothes, and so were the monkeys. They rode on bicycles, danced, and climbed ladders. There were wild tigers and lions in a big round wire cage. A man with a whip was inside the cage with them. He had them trained to jump through a hoop of fire and to roll over. He even kissed them. He was very brave. During the break in the middle of the circus, funny clowns came out and did silly things. They had happy faces and sad faces. Some had big red noses that honked if you squeezed them. There were rides on elephants too. I didn't go on one because it cost too much money. The last act took up the whole tent. It was the acrobats. They hung from their teeth, their feet, and their necks high up in the air. They also swung high up in the air and flew to each other. It's kind of scary to watch because I was afraid they might fall. I had a very good time at the circus. However, my tummy felt kind of sick from all the cotton candy and junk food I ate. Going to the grocery store. Each week, I go to the grocery store to buy food for my family. I get a shopping cart from the front of the store. And I push the cart all around the store. The cart is large, but when I am finished shopping, the cart is nearly full. The grocery store is also called a supermarket. When I go shopping, I start out in the produce section of the supermarket. The produce section is where the fresh fruits and vegetables are kept. I like to buy different kinds of fruit, such as apples, oranges, and bananas. The vegetables that I often buy are carrots, peas, and corn. I also buy tomatoes when they are bright red in color. I often buy a bag of potatoes or a bag of rice. After visiting the produce section, I go to the meat section. Here I buy poultry such as chicken and turkey. I often buy seafood, especially fish. I also buy beef. And sometimes pork or lamb.
I also visit the dairy section, where I can buy milk and cheese. Sometimes I also buy ice cream or yogurt. When I have finished in the meat and dairy sections, I then move to the bakery section. This is where loaves of bread are baked and sold. There are many different kinds of bread in the bakery section. The bakery section also sells pasta, such as macaroni and spaghetti. And of course, you can buy pies, cakes, and cookies in the bakery section. These foods are very sweet and tasty. I also pick up a few other things at the supermarket, such as soap, toothpaste, and cleaning supplies. But sometimes I forget to buy something that I plan to get. Maybe I should make a list of the things I need to buy. A day at the beach. When the hot summer weather arrives, many people like to cool off by visiting the beach. Often there is a cool breeze that comes off the water, and of course the water itself is cool and refreshing. One of the favorite activities at the beach is building sandcastles. Children use small shovels and pails to move the sand. They can build small forts and castles by carefully forming and shaping the sand. Building sand castles is a lot of fun, but you shouldn't build them too close to the water. A wave might come and wash your sand castle away. There are also many games that people like to play at the beach. Some people play catch with a small plastic disc called a frisbee. The frisbee glides smoothly through the air. Other people like to play beach volleyball in the soft sand. Some people prefer just to relax on the beach. They like to lie down on a blanket and feel the warm sunshine. I like to sit on the beach with an ice cream cone, but you have to eat it quickly before it melts. Of course, the main attraction of a beach is the water. Many children learn to swim at the beach. And enjoy playing in the water. Some people like to swim vigorously. Other people like to relax in the water on an inflatable floating mattress. Other people just wade around in the water as a way to keep cool. When it is a windy day, some people try sports such as surfing. Going to the beach is surely one of the best ways to spend a summer day.